Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone that's liked the videos, watched them, left any comments and subscribed to the channel. It's really started to grow now. It took about a year to get to 100 subscribers and now we're at 211 and that's uh, gone up loads in the last two weeks since my last video. So thank you for that. Um, a lot of you watch the videos and you're returning viewers but you're not subscribed. Um, please hit that button if you can and like the videos as it does help the channel grow and it makes all of this worthwhile. Obviously it's hard enough building the house on your own let alone remembering to set up cameras and film bits and pieces so it all helps and it helps the channel grow. Right, today's video is gonna be mainly building the front part of the house. I've had to run a string line from the right to the left of this because, because the front still wasn't in and I wasn't able to build the uh, front floor space to start with. I had to build the walls in a U shape. So I started on the right and I worked all the way around to the other side as obviously there's no steel on the front to be able to do the front wall. This meant that I was setting all my heights basically all from that front right corner and I was leveling it for spirit levels I went around so it wasn't quite spot on by the time I'd got to the front left looking at it now it was about an inch higher from left to right so I put the string line in obviously so I can get that increase in wall height correct so that's running from right to left right the way across now what you can see I'm doing here is I'm setting plate to that string line that goes across so in the usual solo man style I've had to build supports to keep everything plumb and straight and counterbalance everything out while I build it. So that's what I'm doing now, I'm just getting it nice and plumb and I've set that top ball plate to the height of the uh, plumb line that runs across the front of it. Okay, so this is the frame for the front bedroom built. I'm not going to be able to build too much of the front wall because I need a way of getting the roof trusses through and stored on that first floor there. So I'm going to build the right hand side part of the wall and then leave the left empty. So what you can see there is I've marked where the windows are going to go. The window on the top is going to be plumbed with the window underneath. So I've got a spirit level and I've leveled off the sides of the downstairs window I've leveled up and then I've marked that on the wall plate and then I've marked where the um, the studs are going to go and where the 10mm clearance gap is going to go between the studs I'm not quite sure what the gap needs to be for the window so I've just allowed 10mm all the way around so when they come and measure it they'll be able to get it to fit and then you've got your jack studs and your king studs marked up there for either side of the window so that'll be nice and plumb with what's downstairs so the next footage you're going to see now is me cutting and building the actual window and then I've got to make another three ply beam, get that above the window to take the load above and uh, then I can start to put the noggins in and then start covering it in the OSB.
so here we have the right bedroom wall finished as you can see there you've got your noggins in you've got your jack studs and your king studs in and there's a 1300mm wide by 1100mm high window plumb with the downstairs window there's a little bit of clearance around the whole of it just like I said earlier for expansion and for clearances for the window but I'd imagine the surveyor will measure and build the windows to fit whatever opening there is the only critical thing now is to make sure that I plumb across and level it across to the wall over that side when I build that I've run out of wood now so the next stage is to start cladding it so you can see the three ply beam there with the coach bolts going through built in exactly the same way as I did in the last video and then you've got flat washers recessed into the inside edge there just so the OSB can go straight over the whole thing and it won't get caught or protrude on the uh, bolts that go through it so that's the next stage now I did it all with the OSB and then cut the windows out afterwards So there's a couple of things to remember when you're putting the OSB boards on the wall. Firstly, it's important to leave a 3mm expansion gap between every board and around the perimeter of the boards so they're able to expand under heat. What you don't want is to have them buttered up next to each other with nowhere for them to go because they'll start to buckle. Um, so what I did is I just got a 3mm nail from the nail gun and I just hammered them into several places between the boards and underneath the boards on the bottom just to help support it in place. It's also important to make sure that you um, reduce the depth of the nails that you're driving into the wall. What you don't want is them to shoot straight through the, the OSB into the studs or be you know, two thirds of the way through. You want them to be nice and tight up against the OSB, pulling it into the stud walls. Otherwise, you could potentially have the OSB pop forward with the nails pulling through, which you don't want. Finally, it's important to make sure that when you're actually nailing the OSB boards, that you start from the middle and work outwards that's so if you've got any curves in the board you can nail them and straighten it as you're going out if you start from left to right or top to bottom the nails aren't going to pull the, the bend out of the board which means you can have a buckled board so when it comes to rendering you've got the potential for the boards to expand and crack so you want the boards to be nice and flat so the render doesn't crack So what you can see now is me cutting out the openings for the windows. It's easier to overboard the windows rather than trying to cut 90 degree cuts into the OSB board or doing it out of single sections. Um, it's a lot better for structure as well if it's a, a single sheet that wraps around the corners of the windows. So what you do with the router is you buy a special bit that's got a guide bearing on it and then you drill a pilot hole in the corner of your window and then you put the router bit through the hole and what it does is the bearing follows the profile of the studs around the window and it allows you to cut the complete section of window out like you can see there. It's a lot neater, it keeps the edging nice and flat and square. 
the only problem is it makes a hell of a mess um, you have to have the router running extremely fast at a really high RPM and the dust just goes absolutely everywhere so it's not the nicest of jobs but you get a lot better cleaner finish by doing it this way